Hey guys, and welcome back to the observatory. In today's video, we're gonna finally be talking about the long awaited all sky camera build. I know a lot of you guys have been very anxious to see the completed build and how it's working. And I wanted to get a few months of testing under its belt before I made a conclusive video on it, just because I wanted to flush out as many of the kinks beforehand so I had a, a real grasp on the concept before I put a video out. And admittedly, I still don't think I have everything dialed in. I'm about 95% of the way there. Most of the things are coming out pretty good and any issues that I run into tend to be a fault of external circumstances like uh, the NAS or the network storage uh, shutting off that I haven't mapped to or other things uh, similar to that. And so it's really not a fault of the system. But I wanted to talk about exactly what my build looked like and why you guys should consider building one similar to this and why it's better than a lot of the all sky cameras out there that you can purchase and a lot better than a lot of the ones I've been seeing people design out there. So the first things first, we're going to talk about the entire build. Now this drawing that I have uh, pulled up for you, I just designed in Lucidchart. So uh, starting from the top and working our way down, uh, I'm using a Mikey 3.5 millimeter lens. It's a fisheye built specifically for micro four thirds sen sized sensors. Uh, I'm using a slightly smaller sensor than that, but it still works out really nicely. Below that, I have a micro four thirds adapter made by ZWO specifically for ZWO cameras and micro four thirds lenses. Attached to that, I have the trusty ZWO 533MC, which is a square one inch sized sensor. It's not actually one inch across, but it is uh, deemed a one inch sensor. And it is perfect for the Mikey 3.5 millimeter lens. It stretches from edge to edge, getting uh, just over 180 degrees, probably about a 200 degree field of view. So I'm able to see horizon to horizon, north, south, east, and west. A lot of these all sky cameras that people are building, unfortunately, they have to cut off two sides of the horizon. So you only get two sides of the horizon in the field of view, and two of them are cropped out. Uh, this lens that I specifically picked out gets as much of the sky in it with cropping out as little as possible and as much of the sensor being filled. The only thing that we lack on in this system is that it is an f2.8 lens. A lot of people would like a faster setup and I'm going to uh, test a faster f2.0 and possibly an even faster system if I can find a faster lens that is still fisheye. I know that someone makes a 6.5 millimeter out there that's pretty darn good that is an f2 lens and so I'm going to try that out here in eventually in the future. But uh, right now I've been using the 2.8 and it's been very satisfactory. After the camera, I have it connected via USB only to a mini uh, computer. And that is just a, a, an off the shelf, you know, I, I picked a pretty random one. I picked the smallest one that I could find uh, that was still running. And actually, the one that I picked, I don't recommend. I would try to find one um, that has slightly better specs than what I picked out. The, the one that I picked does not use NVMe storage. It uses MSEA uh, storage that is specifically sized uh, for a smaller, uh, for the 2242, I think, or 2240 or whatever it is. It's the very short um, NVMe sized hard drives, but they're MSEA. Don't recommend the one that I picked. I would pick uh, probably a Melee Quieter or something with a small fan but can still use NVMe storage, M.2 storage. That's the better stuff. So I ended up not using an SSD in the build that we have. And then uh, how we're powering this system. This is kind of a, an interesting setup and this is one of the other reasons that sets this build apart from a lot of the other ones is that it is using a PoE splitter. So instead of bringing 12 volts or um, 120 volts into the system as well as an ethernet or just bringing 120 volts and then relying off of Wi-Fi, I'm getting both ethernet and power into it with a 
Ethernet cable running PoE plus or 802.3AT. And I'm doing that just using a PoE splitter, which is a cheap little $20 device that has both Ethernet and a 12 volt plug coming out of it. And it also steps down the voltage from 48 volts down to 12 volts so I can plug in the computer. So the computer powers the camera and the computer is powered using this 802.3AT splitter. And it has been more than enough power to power the computer and the camera. I haven't had any issues. Um, and then on here, I have labeled uh, an EtherCon with a cable gland. I ended up not going with this method. I just cut a raw Ethernet cable and shoved it right in there and then uh, terminated it myself, plugged it into the splitter, and it worked perfectly. Um, I recommend this for uh, permanent installations. If you're ever going to be taking it off uh, and pulling it down regularly, then I would recommend going with something like an EtherCon connector that's IP rated. Um, Eventually, I'm when I design a future housing for this thing and we swap out the current housing that we've designed with a better one, I'm going to um, swap out the connection that we have from a raw Ethernet cable over to a EtherCon connector, which will be significantly more solid. It'll be waterproof and it will be able to unplug and plug back in uh, however I'd like. And then finally, I have also listed here a dome heater, which I have labeled as optional. I ended up not going with one. Um, there has been times where I've had dome fog be an issue, but most of the time the ambient heat from the mini computer and the camera have done more than enough to heat the system and keep a lot of the frost and the dew away. Um, the uh, when it does snow snow will build up on it but it will burn off a significant amount but it, it was more effort than it was worth to use um, all of those adapters and try to get some sort of dome heating going on when the rest of the dome is ambiently heated by the computer uh, and then finally uh, out the things that aren't listed on here i have uh, flocking that has gone in between uh, the the lens and the dome and so that has helped block some of the light off from the computer like the ethernet port the spl ethernet splitter both of those have little leds on them so i put foam uh, and cut out a hole roughly the size of the camera lens and then i uh, it's basically like a donut shape that i slipped on over the camera lens and it, it when the box is closed covers up all of the stray light that would be shooting up from the computer um, and then I guess I should also mention the acrylic dome and the weatherproof box that I used um, I just picked random ones off of Amazon it doesn't really matter what you go with make sure that the acrylic dome that you pick uh, is one that is designed for CCTVs a lot of the ones out there have pretty crappy molds so see if you can find one that looks like it's pretty mass produced and has like some sort of uh, CCTV locking kind of connection a lot of those ones tend to have smoother finishes than the generic acrylic domes that you might find out there uh, some of them most of them are really labeled for CCTV so you have to go and really find the right ones um, if you buy any of the ones made for uh, like the Starlight Express cameras, those are probably much higher quality, um, but they're going to cost you more money. I picked one that was 15 bucks, and it was a really nice one, but I also bought another one that was about 12 bucks, and the quality of that one was significantly lower. Um, but I would also recommend buying two because you're going to probably scratch the first one when you're working on the whole thing and so having a replacement one to go as soon as the first one gets significantly scratched up is a really good idea um, so when assembling this whole thing all we did was uh, cut a hole in the top of the weatherproof box and then we created a simple mounting jig that had a quarter inch thread to match the thread on the inside of the camera or maybe that's an eighth inch quarter inch thread i think is what it is but 
Anyways, it matches the thread on the bottom of the ZWO camera. And so that just sits on a small pedestal lifted above everything. And then all the other components are just attached with screws or with zip ties on the inside of the box. So they don't rattle around and move. Uh, one thing that I have noticed with this setup is that I have had um, moisture buildup on the inside just because the ambient air inside the box has moisture. Uh, it hasn't been an issue though and since this box is designed where the components are lifted about uh, three eighths of an inch off the bottom. Um, water accumulation was not a real issue and it's not like more water is getting in there it's a sealed system so the few pieces of con or a few drops of condensation aren't really too big of an issue the other issue that we were running into is the computer is running into issues with it not being uh, able to power on with a wake on land command I just don't know what's going on there I need to reconfigure something in the BIOS probably uh, and then lastly, I want to talk about the software that I'm using. And this is the actual last thing I'm going to talk about. It's called All Sky, A L L S K E Y E. Um, it's been really, really good. Um, at first, it was really tough to um, program, I was having a lot of issues with some of the settings. And then digging through the manuals, uh, on that software, digging through all the fine print, I was able to dial a lot of the settings in. But that really deserves its own video talking about the software because there's so much to really dial in there. So I'm going to talk about all of that in a completely separate video. But this is just the hands-on hardware components that I wanted to talk about for you guys so you can get an idea of how to build one of these things yourself. And so with that, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like the video, please leave a like. If you uh, are not subscribed yet, make sure you are subscribed so you can catch up on all of the great videos coming out in the future. Uh, it's a lot of great stuff coming out. Obviously, you're going to want to see the next video in this series, uh, as well as some of the other series that I have coming out, like my Messier Marathon. So anyways, thank you guys very much for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.